Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to take a look at this really really awesome new game that I absolutely adore. This is a game called Children of a Dead Earth and it's actually kind of hard to describe uh, what it's all about. In this video I'm going to try to do my best to explain it to you and I'll play through one of the missions just to give you an idea of what it's like. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this game is kind of difficult to uh, basically describe in terms of genres because it's a combination of strategy, sandbox, and really, really, really realistic educational science game, which is actually why I love it so much. I haven't really played through a lot of it yet, but what I've seen so far is absolutely incredible. Now, for me to actually unlock the sandbox mode, I have to finish this mission right here. This will allow me to start designing my own ships which I still can't do, unfortunately, but we can actually play with the pre-made ships, which are already quite powerful um, and are quite interesting as well. Anyway, let's start the first mission, or I guess the third mission here, called Predatory Opportunism. There's uh, two challenges I have to actually complete. One of them is out of play maneuvering, and one of them is fleet combat with a, a much more powerful enemy. And this is going to be happening around um, a moon of Jupiter called Ganymede. Now, this game is very, very complex, especially if you've never played games like Kerbal Space Program or um, if you don't know much about orbital mechanics. And so this game actually does recommend that you read through some of these things because this will teach you how this game works and what um, weapons do uh, and what uh, different engines do and how to basically intercept your enemy and so on. But the tutorial so far has been very, very helpful. So I'm just going to go ahead and start my mission and try to complete this without really using um, any help. So we're basically are going to do the following. We're going to take our beautiful craft, which is right here. It's our escort carrier. Um, we're going to zoom into it and just to see what it looks like. So this is actually what it what it's what it's like. Um, I'm going to remove these help buttons here. And so this is us orbiting around Ganymede right now. It looks pretty awesome. I don't really know what this flag is, but you can also see inside your ship and see what's on the inside. Um, and all of these parts can be um, added when you actually unlock the ship design, uh, or ship designer that is. The way that uh, spacecraft work in this game uh, is uh, basically very realistic. They have obviously nuclear engines. Um, that propel them. They have um, a lot of different parts here that uh, are responsible for adding fuel, adding things like um, life support, and of course there's also weapons. And the weapons are actually right here. This railgun is one of the weapons. Um, and all of the weapons in this game are broadside. Basically, kind of like the ancient ships uh, during the... The exploration of the New World um, era and the Paris era, all of the ships had their weapons on the side. And so this is what the ships are like here as well. And these are basically my real guns. And I believe I also have um, my uh, drones because this is actually an, this is a carrier ship. So it can actually carry these drones. Now I'm going to disable this so that my, all my drones launch um, at the same time. And now we're actually going to do the following. We're going to go back and we're going to change our orbital plane. We're going to align our orbital plane with the enemy, but we're not going to intercept it just yet because if I come close to it, it is going to destroy me. If I were to actually zoom in here, you would see that this is actually a very, very powerful ship. It's actually immobile, it doesn't have any fuel left, but its weapons are really strong. And it's, it, it, this thing right here can tear me apart in no time. So I need to use my, um, my drones because I'm a carrier. I'm going to use my drones to try to um, attack him from a distance. But to do this, we actually have to change our plane. And to do that, we're going to uh, wait until we're right here. And now play around with our plane um, until it becomes aligned with the plane of the enemy. And by the way, I totally made a mistake. This is not Ganymede. This is actually Mercury. Ganymede was my previous mission. Anyway, so I'm going to play around with this blue thingy until my plane is aligned with the enemy. And so this is actually kind of close. I'm going to maybe modify this a little bit after the first maneuver um, that I'm going to execute now. But let's just see what happens. So I'm going to now um, go in here. So this will actually start launching automatically. And we're going to basically run the game. We're going to 
take a, a one hour turn and you can actually change the, um, the the actual length of the turn if you want you can either go in minutes or even in days and now that i actually have a new orbit i'm going to kind of finalize it i'm going to actually go in here and finalize this orbit making it a little bit better and so this is going to be our final orbit right here. It's um, basically right underneath the enemy craft, but it's going to be far enough from it that the enemy won't be able to do anything to us. And so now we can actually start attacking it. So now that I actually have an orbit, you can kind of see that I can basically orbit around it and it won't really do anything to us. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is actually launch uh, my drones, launch my actual weapons at him uh, by doing the following. We're going to go into this and select the drones and so here we go i've just released my drones they're being released from my craft right now you can kind of see them leaving my spaceship um and these drones will basically be attacking the enemy so as soon as all of them are released they'll have a mission to go and attack the enemy now the reason i changed the plane is because all of the drones here um have a limited amount of delta v they, they don't really have as much of delta v as my carrier does and so now i gave them a very very um different sort of alignment and much easier location from which they can basically attack the, uh, the enemy spacecraft so now what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these drones we've released and so now i'm going to try to create an intercept node where all of these drones can try to approach the enemy craft and hopefully destroy it so there is a position right here that's relatively close um and it says we can have a flyby or an intercept and I think I'm going to go for the intercept. We just have to make this a little bit slightly better than what it is right now. And we're going to select intercept uh, USTA Corvette. This will give us an intercept plot and it will actually automatically calculate everything. And so all we have to do now is to basically wait for our drones to get there. And they're actually going to be approaching the enemy craft. And as soon as they get there, they'll be able to um, engage in the, uh, the battle mode. And here we go. So this is the battle mode. Um, it's currently paused, but the way this works is kind of cool. So there's this uh, radar-like structure on the right. This is us. This is the enemy. And it tells us um, how far away our weapons can actually fire, or from what distance they can fire. The enemy will also have these arcs, and they'll be pointing at us. But because we are actually drones, we're really, really, really fast, um, he will most likely have a lot of trouble aiming at us. Um, we, however, should have no trouble at all trying to get close to him and basically uh, destroy him. Now, there's a bunch of orders I can actually give my drones, and uh, it's all under here, and I can actually make them um, go toward the enemy at full speed and try to intercept the enemy, which is what I'm going to do right now. And all of the um, actual weapons will fire automatically. Uh, so we are going to unpause the game, and let's see how it goes. So here we go, fly by in 10 seconds, 9 seconds, and we're about to start firing at the enemy and there we go enemy is firing all right so we had a first flyby we're going to do another one and now we're actually going to go and um start attacking the enemy as well because i want to actually start destroying uh the enemy and not just fly by it and so uh, as soon as my um drones turn around oh, they'll be able to approach him again and unfortunately they're actually running out of delta v really really fast and yeah so that happened i ran out of delta v and all of my drones have been actually disabled so that's how difficult this game actually is i totally lost this mission i have to start over i'm going to try again and this time i'm going to try to make sure that i don't actually have just a flyby i'm going to establish a much more stable orbit for my drones and so here goes attempt number two. We're going to try to do this again. Um, I just realized that actually my drones have their weapons in front. I don't have to position them broad broadside like I thought I did. Uh, although bigger ships do have to do that. So uh, the enemy I'm attacking, it would have to actually be to their broadside to attack my drones. Now we have 16 seconds before the intercept. Um, th this is what my drones look like. Very, very beautiful. And um, they're are they're basically attacking the enemy let's check it out let's see what ha what's happening here look at that look how awesome this is they're basically trying to destroy uh, the enemy and i think wow we, we've done it we may have actually uh oh no at least uh, 
we didn't destroy it specifically, but we did actually damage it quite a lot. Uh, so I'm going to lose four of my drones just now because unfortunately they, they were moving a little bit too fast again. But I was able to um, actually uh, disable at least one of the um, enemy compartments, I think. And as you can see, they're still firing at him, but I don't know if they'll be able to actually do anything to him uh, because they have no more fuel left. So these guys are done. Okay, I, I may need to actually um, read more about how drones actually work because this is my first time using these, uh, but it, it is a super, super complex and super interesting game. So here, essentially, you're always trying to strategize your orbits. Um, you're trying to strategize and try to figure out what is the best way for you to approach the enemy, what is the best um, strategy to use when you're about to attack them, and most importantly, uh, will you actually have enough fuel to then return back to your base or to essentially come back to the carrier if you're talking about drones. And in, in this case, I actually lost uh, four drones again. Uh, I do have one more drone coming there, I think. Yeah, there's one more drone coming that I'm going to try to experiment with, and let's see if we can actually do something different. Let's see if we can actually just uh, use controlled ho homing strategy and um, basically approach the enemy, attack it, and then um, maybe return back somehow. I can also actually choose what I want to attack, and in this case, I think I'm going to uh, try to aim for the enemy railgun. Uh, and there's my drone. It actually uh, passed by really, really fast. Um, let's see if we can maybe return back to the map here and uh, because my drone still has a little bit of fuel left it'll be able to do another pass by later on so i can actually select my drone right now and unfortunately it's moving a little bit too fast um let's see if we can actually decrease its speed and make it come back for another uh, flyby if i have enough um delta v to do that all right, so we did uh, get another uh, intercept, another flyby of the same drone. And let's see if we can actually do a little bit more damage to uh, to the enemy here. We're going to attack mostly its railguns. Um, we're going to aim at the railguns. And you can see we, we've already made a big hole right there. This, this is a hole from our initial first strike. But anyway, so let's see what happens here. And um, the idea here is for us to essentially uh, try to damage the enemy as much as we can. Um, without obviously losing our own ships, but because they have such a powerful ship, it might be actually kind of challenging. Incoming transmission. And there we go, we did it. Uh, excellent, the undeclared war is starting on a very good note. Now let's get back to port before enemy reinforcements arrive. So we were able to destroy this particular ship with only five drones, and I still have like 15 or so left. Now, this is essentially how this game works. Um, there is a bunch of missions you can go through, uh, unfortunately not too many, this will probably take you maybe six or so hours of gameplay, um, but the, the beautiful part of this game is that it does have a sandbox mode, which you can play um, with your friends or by yourself, there's also ship designer, which allows you to design different ships, and this right here is still locked to me, but this is a module designer which allows you to create actual modules. You can actually play around with various scientific concepts to create some incredibly powerful weapons, some incredibly powerful um, nuclear engines, for example, or uh, do something completely different. You can actually design your own ship completely from scratch. Like, for example, if I were to look at this beamcraft, you can redesign everything. You can, you know, you can redesign the solar panels, make them a lot more efficient, redesign the weapons, redesign the hull and the armor. And uh, all in all, this game is absolutely complex. It's definitely really, really fun to play, especially if you're into um, scientific games, if you're into games that um, allow you to learn as you play through them. And uh, most importantly, if you're into games that are challenging, because this game is very, very hard and involves a lot of orbital mechanics, a lot of really interesting concepts, including, of course, um, the way projectiles and lasers work. And um, it does involve a very difficult campaign mode. Um, from what I've read about it, it does get a lot more challenging, a lot more difficult. And some of the last battles are actually going to make you think quite a lot. Um, even on the third mission, I was already struggling. And I'm guessing that uh, by the time I get to the fourth mission, I'm going to have a lot more thinking to do. But anyway, so that's the game in a nutshell. This is the game called The Children of a Dead Earth. Really, really awesome game that has been released um, late September of 2016. Give it a try. It's um, it's about $24 on Steam without a sale. And I think it's totally worth the money, but mostly because it's so original, very challenging. It involves both the learning of science and space sciences and also the entertainment of trying to uh, best your enemy. 
Um, anyway, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you still haven't. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.